let's do it right now. Our next talk is by Sarah. Take it away, Sarah. Go. All right, good morning, PurpleCon. And good morning, live streamers. I hope you're there somewhere. Um, all right, I am confused. Let's talk about permissions. Uh, but first, who I am? Uh, my name is Sarah. Some of you might know me around the internet as Sarah, S-E-R-A. Uh, I am a site reliability engineer at PushPay. It's pretty great. Come find me later. I have lots of pony stickers. Uh, <laughs> and if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm TS Dubs. Please feel free to send me lots of photos of your cats. <laughs> All right. So, hands up if you've ever had this problem. I'm working through a problem. I'm building an app. I'm deploying my app. I'm confused. What is this I am stuff I need? Uh, I'm in a hurry. I'm not sure what's going on. I'm going to copy paste something from the internet. I'm giving up. Star everything. I'm done. I don't know about you, but I run into this on a daily basis in my job. And so I figured I'd come here and talk to you all today about the hardest thing I've found and hopefully clear some things up. So meet Groot. He's one of the guardians of the galaxy, and he's heard about this newfangled AWS thing that'll let him put a spaceship up in the cloud. But he ran into exactly the same issue, what even is I am? So let's start at the beginning. I am, Identity and Access Management, is a service offered by AWS that provides a rule set for managing actions taken on resources. I have a disclaimer. Yes, there are other cloud providers. Yes, they offer user management services. We only have 15 minutes, so I'm just going to talk about AWS today. All right. So I am is basically just a framework for saying who can do what to which things, or under what conditions. You have a principle. This is the who. Actions are a set of rules, that's what they can do. And resources, that's a server or an S3 bucket or whatever it is, this is the thing they're allowed to do it to. Add it all together and you get a policy. So let's break it right down for a minute and help Groot out. So a principle is who can do the thing. This might be a user, this might be a group of users, or it might even be a role. A role is kind of like not a person but a job you can do. So it might be a guardian, or an avenger, or in this case, a pilot. Actions, this is what you're allowed to do. There's a whole predefined set of these in AWS, and every single resource type has its own set of actions you can add. But for the sake of an example, we'll go through EC2. You can describe an instance, or you can get the availability zones of the instances. S3, you can put objects in, take objects out, list all the buckets, things like that. And IAM even has its own set of actions, such as list users or get MFA device. And finally, resources. This is the thing you can do your actions on. So in our case, we've taken the Milano, the Guardians of the Galaxy ship, and we've made it an S3 bucket. They always take these ARN formats, Amazon resource name. So you've got ARN, AWS, the type of service it is, your account, your user, et cetera. Uh, by the way, the Milano is named after Alyssa Milano, who is apparently Star Lord's childhood crush. So, fun fact. All right, put it all together, you get a policy. A policy consists of a version and then a statement, which is effectively like, allow your thing to do these things to the resource. Makes sense so far? It's pretty good, but what if we don't want to write out every single person and every single action and every single resource all the time? This brings us to wildcards. <laughs> I know, exciting stuff. Uh, so a wildcard is basically like, do all the things that look like this. So in this particular instance, we've got S3, get star, which lets you do any action that starts with get. We've got EC2 star, which lets you do any action in the EC2 set. Or we've got IAM star access key star, which lets you do anything with access key in the middle. So this might be like list access keys, get access key, delete access key, all those sorts of things. You can also just put a star in the resource, which just lets you do your actions on anything. Cool. So Groot's got the basics down. He's ready to get going. Uh, let's start with architecting all the bits and pieces we need, and let's start by creating some users for our guardians. Makes sense, right? Now Groot's a seasoned professional at this. He knows what he's doing, so he's going to go follow the Amazon documentation. 
is there anyone from AWS in the room? <laughs> All right. So I grabbed these documentations out of uh, AWS's well-architected archives, which is essentially like their best practice guides for how to use their services. And I followed them through and set everything up for group. And now I have to set everything up for Starlord. So first we create a user. Starlord's not here right now. He's off in some other galaxy doing something with someone else. And so we decided to give Starlord the ability to manage his own stuff so he can set permissions, add his own MFA, all that sort of thing. So we create a policy and we add statements to allow users to get their account information. It looks something like this. Allow users to list all the accounts. Allow individual users to see and manage their own MFA. And then block you unless you're signed in with MFA. So you can't do anything until you add an MFA to your account, right? Pretty good standard first practice. But then there's this statement here. Allow individual user to see and manage only their own account information, which you can see is a very big block of IAM actions that lets you change password, update your access key, all these sorts of things. So we send Starlord off his new password and tell him to set up, set up his MFA, all the things, and he logs in and sees this in the console. <laughs> so even the AWS docs get this wrong sometimes. Uh, as you can see, he can't actually see when he last used his MFA key, so he has no idea whether it's even set up or not. Um, yeah. So Groot goes through and he looks at some documentation and he figures out that this is what he needs to add here. I am get access key last used. And Starlord can see what he's doing. Cool. Starting to get it. All the Guardians have their own users now. Our ship's set up as a bucket. We can get things in and out of the bucket. It's awesome. But We've only talked to adding, about adding policies to principles like users so far. You can actually add policies to the buckets themselves. So when you add a policy to a user, it's like giving them a permission slip, right? We're saying, hey, show this permission slip and you can do the things. There's another way we can go about this. We can actually add a VIP list to the bucket instead, which says allow anyone on this list to come in. So now that we've flown down to Earth and we've met the Avengers, we need to add them to our ship as well. So it's probably going to look something like this, breaking it down pretty quick. There's two statements here. The first one allows the Avengers to see the ship. That's S3 list bucket. And that happens on the bucket resource. Whereas you've then got something that allows the Avengers to look inside the bucket as well. S3 is a bit tricky like this. You kind of have some actions that are on the bucket and some actions that are on the resources inside. I just wanted to make that point because that trips a lot of people up. And then finally, we've got a deny statement there as well. That prevents anyone from the DC universe or the Sony universe or anyone who's not an Avenger from coming onto our ship. Problem here is Spider-Man. <laughs> he, um, he's obviously part of the Sony user group, and so he can't actually get on the ship all of a sudden. And everyone goes, what? Why can't you get on? Uh, so you go and you look this up in the AWS documentation, and you find a flowchart that looks like this. <laughs> Um, I mean, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but as you can see, it's like the yes and no swap places. It's really hard to follow. It's a flowchart that goes like up and down. What? Um, <laughs> I hope there's no one from AWS here. <laughs> um, so TLD TLDR, an explicit deny is always going to deny someone. Even if there's a more explicit rule that says, hey, allow this person. If they're on the de deny list, they're always going to be denied. If they have a permission slip, they can come in. If they're on the VIP list, they can come in. But if, if not, it just defaults to deny as well. So AWS kind of always defaults to, no, you can't do the thing, which is good, I guess. <laughs> OK, so after all this, it's still pretty hard. There's deny rules. The documentations are hard to read. What are you supposed to do but just put in S3 star and be done with it, right? Uh, so AWS have made some of their own policies for you to use, which makes it pretty easy, right? There's kind of a predefined set of things. Um, this particular one you might not be able to see, but it's AWS Lambda full access which you would give to a user to give them full access to the Lambda service. What you might not be able to see is that it kind of has permissions that we're not actually necessarily expecting. Like there's DynamoDB star and 
is three star and pass roll. And I mean, like these are fine, these do the job, but maybe just be a little bit critical about what AWS managed policies you're throwing onto things because they can have like much wider nets than you expect them to have. What I'm trying to get at <laughs> is that star is not your friend. I'm being a little bit harsh here, to be fair. When it's just you and a few Guardian friends, it's pretty easy to just say, let's give the permissions S3 star and be done with it. It's true, it works really well, especially if you're at like hackathon weekend and you're just desperately trying to get off the ground, just throw permissions out in the wild, it's fine. But once you start adding more users and your product grows, then you've got to start worrying. The second you have, you know, the Avengers join your team, suddenly you need to be a bit more careful. There's two ways you can kind of go about this. I mean, you can just kind of give everyone a huge wide set and then start narrowing it down as you go. Or you can start off with the absolute bare minimum permissions you need and just add things as you run into blocks. Obviously, that's a much slower way to go about it, but you're going to end up with like the absolute minimum permission set. I'm not going to tell you how to build your app, but I am going to say just think about this as you go. Uh, if you do want to start wide and come down, there are some really good tools for this sort of thing. I recommend Netflix's Aardvark. It's like a, an API that will scrape all your permissions on all your services and tell you which ones you're not actually using. Uh, Salesforce have a similar thing. But if there's one point I can make, it's this. Think really hard about how wide your permissions are and do you really need them this wide? So there's some other really cool things you can do with IAM as well. Uh, one of the things that's quite useful is putting a condition statement on things. These can be things like you only work under certain conditions, only after a certain date or time, whether or not a user has MFA enabled, whether or not the MFA is more than an hour old, that sort of thing. So you can also use them to deny requests that don't have like a secret in the header, which may or may not be what I actually did, which may or may not have accidentally broken my deployment for a bit. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> um, so in Groot's case, he might use these to prevent people from assuming roles after they've left the Guardians, or maybe prevent them from joining until they've actually signed all the documentation. I don't know. There's also this concept of permission boundaries, which are a super useful tool if you're an admin and you're kind of managing other users who might want to make their own admins. So you can use it to prevent people from using permissions you may not want them to. It's like a subset of things. It's like a fence around. They can give permissions outside of that subset to things, but they won't be able to have those, use those actions unless they're within the boundary you've set. Uh, you can kind of think of it like Groot gives permission to the Avengers to fly the Milano, but only on Earth. So they can't take it out into space. They can only fly it around. They can't use the warp drive, etc. cetera. Uh, there's also pass roll. So remember, roles are a job you can do. You like put on a hat and you go to work and you do the job. Uh, pass role kind of lets you take that role and pass it on to your own resources. So it's kind of like Star-Lord, who's the pilot of a ship, making a whole lot of little ships and then giving them the ability to, uh, to pilot themselves. By itself, pass role is super useful, actually. You can pass things down the chain, and if you've got good permission boundaries, you're happy. But if you combine it with things like create role, and create policy, suddenly you've got these autonomous ships who can drive themselves and also start creating their own rules and regulations. And like, that sounds like a bad time. Uh, so by itself it's fine, but combined with the rest of them, it could actually end up with privilege escalation, we call it, i.e. things doing things you didn't intend them to do. Okay, I made you a little resources slide. Uh, this is going to be available on the Great Archive, plus some other things, so don't stress about taking a photo of it right now. But I did just want to call attention to Aardvark and Policy Century, the tools to narrow your permissions down I talked about. And there's some guides there from AWS that show you how to make a basic uh, policy generator. There's some ARNs guides, all sorts of useful stuff. <laughs> okay. So, I hope that I've inspired you at least a little bit to start thinking about how you've assigned permissions to all your users and all your computers and hopefully start narrowing things down and maybe cleared up a little bit of what's actually going on behind the scenes here. Thank you very much.